Hey traders, this is uh, my uh, morning video. Uh, basically, when I came in this morning, I saw the U.S. futures really looking bad, but they were considering how bad Europe was looking. I thought we were doing relatively bit well compared to Europe. Uh, typically, what you see is Europe having a bit up after us having a really strong close. And what we had this morning, they uh, they actually were trading it down one and a half percent percent on the news. And we were coming down with them, but we were on a relative basis doing far less bad than they were. So I had a natural bullish inclination to buy the dip today at the appropriate levels. Okay. And uh, one second here. Oh, Charlie decided he wanted to come on right when I started my video. But basically, my target for today is the 3088. That is the magnet. Uh, that I am still eyeing that this zone right here for the week, this is where price wants to migrate and close to, right, right above the 200 moving average. Uh, that is the target, the 3088 zone. Um, is, uh, in my opinion, as we tighten these markets up, that is where price is trying to migrate, barring some major headline event to push markets either up or down. Uh, you know, like a major celebrity catching the virus or something like that, or a major celebrity dying, that could have uh, a major impact on the markets. But uh, I'm just thinking they're trying to uh, build out some value sideways here. And uh, basically, that's what I'm looking for here in the markets. Uh, 38, 3088, the uh, close this afternoon. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I have been wrong in the past. Uh, we are holding up above our uh, AEMA on our Qs on the daily, getting responsive bid, and we're holding right here on the 2020 open, uh, holding out right here at the uh, uh, 2020 open on the Qs. So keep that in mind going forward here, uh, what the markets are trying to do. We're trying to uh, just hold this level on the open here for the Qs, and that's acting as a nice support area to oscillate back and forth this week. Um, you know, and build out value at this level. Uh, well, like I said in a prior video, we're in a volume vo uh, void on the queues, so we could actually get a surprising move. Um, but basically, here is value, developed value for 2020 uh, uh, to the upside, and then here's value that we left off last year. So we're right here in this value void on the queues. So, you know, yeah, of course, we can have a massive uh, breakdown or breakup uh, based on the cues because we are in between value areas, okay? And I had mentioned that before. And the Russell, they're going to cut OPEC production here. Russell doesn't want to have anything to do with it. And uh, the press announcement is tomorrow. Uh, but basically, with the press announcement coming out and everything, I will probably start... Uh, initiating uh, some swing longs in Occidental Petroleum or uh, uh, Pioneer Natural Resources um, sometime today. Uh, you know, I'm going to start small, of course, and, uh, you know, two, three weeks out and start uh, accumulating some uh, exposure into the oil patch. Uh, very, you know, you have to have time whenever you have a sector that's completely and totally out of favor. So that's just some things I'm thinking about for a longer-term swing trade uh, scenario by the dip. And uh, if the if the markets are going to catch a bid, the oil patch is where, it, where the short squeeze is going to be. So, you know, if you, you know, naturally lean to a bullish side, you know, uh, the oil is where the bid is going to be. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, Netflix, uh, that was one of my last trades for today. Uh, basically, I had, from the last responsive sell point, uh, uh, I have a Fib fan set up, and I saw we were holding value this morning, holding the value area low, so I was managed to buy in right down here and catch a really nice scout for the entire value range, make some nice profit on Netflix for a bullish call. Uh, we're probably going to... Uh, 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 it looks like we're going to be topping out here on Netflix. Uh, we'll see what happens going forward here. 
Uh, but man, that was a really nice scalp trade uh, going on in here in Netflix, which I managed to catch uh, based on my charting. Uh, Microsoft, I made some profit, uh, not quite as much. It it, uh, it dangled around a little bit here. Uh, I have a similar thing with my Fib fans. We were uh, right below. This is a major support area that has was holding so far this morning, all pre-market. So I bought in down here right next to the uh, support line. Um, it was just taking a little bit too much time uh, this morning. Uh, I chucked it for about a hundred about hundred dollars or something like that. It just was uh, taking a little bit longer than I wanted on the trade. And uh, but uh, basically, uh, the uh, five minute uh, twenty one SMA was holding pretty good here. Uh, we, we broke it down right here. And uh, it just uh, didn't seem like it was getting a responsive bid. So I actually took it and got out. I wasn't in it for a few minutes and, uh, you know, an easy $100. But uh, this has had turned out to be a very good trade for anybody taking the Microsoft calls uh, to the upside. Uh, right, but, you know, these Fed fans are really nice trading zones to be trading in. This is probably, this could very well be the highs of the session for Microsoft. So. Just keep that in mind going forward here. I still, you know, uh, like I said, there's considerable upside potential in the markets if if I get where I'm planning on getting today. Apple, that was one of my very first trades out of the gate this morning. Uh, basically, we got our FIB fans. Uh, we were had a value area similar. Basically, did the same setup. We were right here trading right here near the value area low, um, you know, right below the value area. Uh, right below the fit fans. I got in early with a stop for breaking the pre-market lows. That was my plan. It worked out really good. I had got that really quick, fast rocket move and Apple locked in my biggest gains for the day and just basically got out and would have actually, if I would have rinsed and repeated there, I would even made higher gains on Apple. So, uh, and actually value for today is this uh, almost $300. So any type of bid in this market, especially with an upgrade, since we have an upgrade in Apple, we are going to get fine buyers here, probably all the way up to this uh, 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 trend line. Yeah, $300. $300 is definitely in the cards for Apple today. So just keep that in mind going forward here in your trading. Uh, I do think that's where price is trying to migrate to. Uh, Zoom video was my next, was my early morning uh, big hit. Uh, Boy, uh, boy wonder or whatever you want to call it and i only took it i'm really kind of upset on this i just uh uh i took the trade all the way up to my volume point of control given the relative weakness early in the morning and had a really nice game very first time i've ever played zoom video got that first responsive i thought we'd get a responsive sell signal i wasn't so sure about the markets but whenever i can lock in some profits at a critical what typically acts as a critical resistance zone, I always do that. I just I just chucked it and uh, you know locked in my profits and called it a day. Okay, uh, let's pause this real quick. See what else I did. Okay, this was the riskiest trade of my trades. Uh, basically, we have a broken pattern going on here in um, Boeing. If you use your Fib fans, you'll see what I mean. Uh, anytime you try to do these reversion trades, whenever the trend has already been broken, uh, this is a lower odds trade. So you'd uh, duplicate this drawing, come down here. And uh, I thought uh, right here at the lows of the session this morning, we would get a rapid responsive bid uh, all the way up here back to the uh, 276 area in Boeing. So I'm not really sure what the news is out on that. And that also you had higher volume point of controls uh, for Boeing, but I took this and it just sat down here. So I took a twenty-five dollar loss on that trade. So it wasn't no big deal on the trade. But anytime you try to do a massive reversion, uh, whenever there's a pattern that's completely broke down, uh, this is a, a lower odds success trade. But it all depends on how strong the internals are and if we're getting correlation in in uh, the broader markets to drive uh, to uh, get a supporting driving thesis to the upside for Boeing uh, in under these situations okay so just keep that in mind going forward here uh, some of the things I'm looking at here 
Uh, I did also have an order in for Snap before the market opened. Uh, my order didn't fill, unfortunately. It came down, but it, it missed my order by two cents by looking back. And uh, my fill order, unfortunately, and uh, just took off to the moon. So, oh well, that's the way it goes. And uh, uh, basically, you can only make your best guess in pre-markets for the cheapest price you can get. And uh, if you miss it, you miss it. And uh, so there's not much you can do about it. So basically, uh, I was actually going to go f in pretty good size, like 50 contracts on that, if I could get my price. And, well, that's the way it goes. And uh, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's not a massive move, but uh, it would have paid pretty good with 50 contracts. Uh, that's my morning. I am calling it quits because... Oh, another thing. The reason I was bullish this morning. Right here at the, at the gate... I was seeing volume coming in on the sell side on the VXX right here at resistance. And I had mentioned in pre-market, I kind of thought we were going to come up here and test this, uh, the 2582 for the VXX. I thought that's what we were going to do is get a sell off early in the markets, test this next uh, vo weekly volume point of control, and then fi start finding responsive buying into the markets. Uh, well, we didn't even manage to get up to there. So that is the bearish case going forward into the afternoon that this other uh, VXX level has not been tested yet. And that's, I just want to get out. That's why I want to be out of the markets because I am actually not sure how this thing's going to pan out. I know Mark and a lot of the members in rooms are really bearish to market here. And this, this does support their thesis. And uh, I've already made very good money today. So I don't want to uh, press my luck and uh yeah you know and give it all back so uh and uh so my final thing i use in the morning and that's my vivix and uh i was already seeing an initial drop in my uh my initial signal that uh the momentum trades uh we were going to start seeing a little bit tightening up in our uh, successful minimum momentum trades so uh, that was another reason that I wanted to uh, tighten up a little bit here. It looks like it's holding up pretty good right now for the momentum trades. So uh, let's see. One last look at my cues and stuff, see how they're trading. Uh, yeah, just ha hanging out there on that uh, 2020 open. I mean, that's pretty much what's going on here. And uh, I just uh, I really think they're trying to hold this zone real tight here. And, uh, you know, the, uh, so we'll see what happens into the afternoon hours. And... Uh, and go from there but uh, like i said i'm all cash so i'll come in tomorrow with a fresh perspective but i am still leaning that the es futures are wanting higher and uh so right here right now that's not it's not proving to be the case so and you know if we break down this is the levels you we're heading for okay and uh so you know keep that in mind these this is where the uh, the gravity points are but uh the you know the logic you know, we'll, we'll see what happens here in the markets. Being under the 200-day moving average, the bears do have con slight edge that, over the bulls. So um, that is something to also keep in mind going forward here in your trading. Thanks a lot.